Well, good morning. This is the March 9th meeting of the North Andover Council of Aging. And we begin with the notice of open meeting law from the governor. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th orders of last year, 2020, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, restricting or imposing a limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the North Andover Council on Aging will be conducted via remote participation. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with the right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.northandoverma.gov. <clears throat> members of the public who wish to watch the meeting may do so on their television by turning to KMA, which is Comcast uh, channel 28 or online. No in-person attendance by members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the Town of North Andover website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive records of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. If the public would like to participate, please, in a public hearing meeting, please email your question or comment either prior to or during the meeting to Irene O'Brien, I-O-B-R-I-E-N at northandoverma.gov. The question or comment will be read during the proceedings and responded to accordingly. So that's the meeting notice. If I do the roll call for what I recall, people being signed in besides myself, Dave Van Arsdale is here, Maria Rosati, Joe McCarthy, Quintira Costa, Jack Graham, Jennifer Abu Ezi. I haven't heard Joe Nahill or Patricia Riley. Are they here? Yeah, I signed in earlier. This is Pat. I signed in. Yeah. You signed in? Okay, I didn't hear you come in. Joe Nahill? <coughs> Not yeah. Joe. Was that Joe? Hello? <laughs> Hello? That's Is that you, Joe Nahill? I, I think that's John Graham. I'm here. Yeah, Jack Graham is here, yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I, we do have two new members. I'm not absolutely sure whether they've been sworn in or not, uh, but they are here. One is Heather Ann Tekesian and also Eileen Donovan Elliott. Would you like to say hello and tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, Heather? Um, hi, my name is Heather. I'm a nurse by what trade, and um, I decided to join the Council on Aging because I thought I could help. Okay, thank you. Eileen? Hi, good morning. Um, thank you for this opportunity. I am a, I have a background in um, education, specifically special education, and have joined senior living in the past um, five years. I've lived in town 18 years, and I have three boys who attend the North Andover Public Schools. Um, my heart goes out to these seniors who have struggled throughout this past year, and I am just so happy to be on board and able to help in any way I can. Yeah, thank you. Welcome to uh, the council. Thank you. I also see D. Casey is here, our deputy town manager, uh -huh. and uh, Paula from the staff is here. Uh -huh. Irene is here as well, and big news is this is probably Irene's final meeting with the Council of Aging after being with the town as director of elder affairs for uh, was it some 18 years. Uh, and 
it's certainly been a delight to have Irene in town and we do appreciate the work she's done all of those years and certainly wish her well and health and success in her retirement. But I'm wondering if the other members or anybody here would like to say something before we get into the real meeting and move on. So let me open the floor and say anyone who would like to uh, make some comments, please do so. And we can give Irene a chance to say something as well. This is Joe, what can we really say? Uh, she's done an absolute stellar job. She'll be sorely missed. And it's gonna take us a while to recover, whether we think that is true or, or, or not. So Irene, terrific job and you'll be missed. And hopefully you'll remain in touch with, uh, with so many of us going forward. Irene, this is Maria. And we've been close for many, many years. Uh, I think I'm actually the oldest one on the board there, but uh, uh, in service to the Council uh, on Aging. But anyway, Irene, I cannot say, I cannot tell you how I feel about your leaving us. But, you know, it comes a time. We all know when the time comes for us to retire and enjoy life. But uh, I will be seeing you. Thank you for your service. And Irene, thank you for your good heart and caring for so many people in their desperate needs at times. And we really have appreciated and respected. And I still think you ought to go on to that next band. That's right. All the <laughs> that was good, David. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I just wanted to wish you the best in retirement. Hope you enjoy it. Hope there's a lot of things you're planning to do. And thank you for all of your service. Okay, thank you. Any others at this point? Okay, Irene, would you like to say anything? <laughs> no, if you, you're on mute if you were trying. If not, then I'll just move on with the agenda. Yeah, it's not the, the first order of business would be to approve of the minutes that you had all received. If someone would like to make a motion to accept the minutes. I'll make, make a motion. motion. Okay, I'll, I'll second it, Brian, Maria. Maria. I may have missed that. Who made the motion? Was it Maria? This is Joe. I made the motion and seconded by Maria. Okay, Joe, Maria. Mr. Any... Chair? Yes? Hi, I'm sorry. Just a point Me? of order. Um, your name is misspelled on the second page. So just a technical correction. Okay. I didn't even see that. Neither did I. <laughs> Boy. Well, we'll find I it and fix a it. W and not a U. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not named after the city. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. Oh. I guess we need to have a roll call to accept the minutes. Uh, Dave Van Arsdale? Yes. Maria Rosati? Yes. Joe McCarthy? Yes. Patricia Riley? Yes. Quintera Costa? Yes. Jack Graham? Yes. Yeah. Jennifer Abuezzi? Yes. Uh, Okay, I'm, I'm not sure about Heather and Eileen yet, so we'll just pass that for the moment and say the minutes were accepted unanimously. Thank you. And next on the agenda is uh, Elder Services Report, and Denise Day Casey uh, will go through that, and I see there are three items she has on here, and if there are any others, that's fine, you can add them. Uh, Steve? Ooh. 
with that. Thank you. Um, if, I'm having a lot of feedback. If people could mute yes. if they're not speaking, yes. that would be great. And it's star six if you're on the phone. I don't know where that. Star six on your phone. I'm seeing some vibrating from someone whose phone ends to nine four. Is that where the noise is coming from? I believe can, so, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? Yeah, could I hear who? Joan Ahill. Oh, okay. Joe is yeah. there. Okay, yes. Wow. If you could put your phone on mute for now. Irene, you're going to have to mute. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, I guess now we're okay, Dee. Thank you yeah, for now, waiting. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Um, so thank you, Mr. Chair, for recognizing me. So I have three agenda items to review this morning. And the first is the Director of Elder Services Recruitment. And um, as you know, we're starting the recruitment to not so much replace Irene, because there really is no replacing someone right. like her. Uh, but we do need to find someone else to run our center. So we have started the Herculean task of uh, advertising for that position. As of this morning, we have nine candidates already have submitted application material. And the town manager and I are going to meet and take a look at those candidates and see which ones that we might want to pre-screen for interviews. So one of the things that I had discussed offline with the chair is ways that the members of this board could participate in the process. And so what I think would be the most um, advantageous way to go about it would be for members of the committee to either submit questions to me via email that they would like to ask in an interview setting and what I was going to do is call each member individually and ask what are some of the things that you would like to see in the next director of elder services in terms of, you know, um, education, experience, qualifications, skills, anything of that nature so that the board can feel like they have input on the process. It is not It is not standard practice to have boards or committees sit in on interviews of staff. That's left for the professional staff to do. Uh, the only board that does it is the Board of Selectmen, and those are for the positions that they directly. So in order for me to be able to balance, you know, the needs of the organization as well as inclusivity of the committee, that's how I would recommend that we go about allowing new participation in the process. So I'm willing to take any feedback at this point. Joe, you're on mute. I can see your mouth moving. Okay, can you hear me now? I can. Okay, um, uh, I've already provided some feedback from a number of people on Irene's uh, replacement. Um, uh, this is going to be a daunting undertaking. I, I, I question if we really have to do it because we have several people that work uh, for Irene uh, that uh, that are, are more than capable of filling the job. When you look for the outside, uh, you are at risk. You do not know, regardless of what that person's resume may say or how they do an interview, you don't know mm. what it is that uh, is going to work out. 
it's a big, big risk that frankly we don't have to take because we have competent people within the department that could fill the position. Also, I suppose it's harmless reaching out to the members of the Council on Aging to ask them for input on an interview. But I have a lot of faith and respect uh, for you and also Kathy Darby and Melissa Rodriguez. Uh, you've done this for many, many years. You really don't need us. But it's, good. it's, it's harmless to reach out asking for additional help and assistance and feedback. Uh, but the bottom line is, I think we should we, sh we should hire from within, period. <clears throat> Too risky. Too risky. I agree. I agree. This is Joan Ahill. Can, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, it's, it's, I absolutely agree with what Joe said, but I think it's doubly important right now, Think remembering that um, the seniors that go to the senior center, really, it, it, it's a way of life for them, and it becomes um, a thing that they do day after day at the same time on every Monday or every Wednesday. They go to lunch every Wednesday at a certain time. They sit at a certain chair. They sit at a certain table. Um, to have their lunch, they sit at certain same places to play bingo, um, and they're very much um, stylized in, in what they do. That being said, they absolutely know um, the faces and the people who are running the senior center. They've had now a year of interrupts with with this pandemic, and their whole lives have been turned upside down. So my thinking is, if we can promote from within. And we certainly can because we've got some really, really, really great candidates uh, who meet all the guidelines for leadership and, um, and personality. And it would be awfully great given that we're, we've got a move coming up. Uh, we're going to try to reopen a center and get everything back to normal that we have two or whatever familiar faces. Uh, Larry knows I'm, I've kind of proposed a co-director um positions that maybe we should think of because usually in situations like this when you've got multiple candidates and one gets picked um you end up at some point down the road losing the other and i believe that the, the two folks who uh, stick in my mind could make a wonderful management team and continue on um going forward uh, with all the wonderful programming that they do. I've had, I've had, um, the, I've had the ability to go to other senior centers um, in the Valley and nothing runs quite like um, um, the North end of the senior center. So I think it's the incumbent upon our clients um, and the town to um, go with the folks that we know. Said he breathlessly. <laughs> he, he, want, he wants to double the two of them. It's a good idea. Plus the fact that the two candidates, uh, potential candidates from within, are really, really competent. Uh, and yeah. to me, it's it's somewhat of a slap that we may not pick either one, and whomever we right. pick may not work out. And the people exactly. that, are, you know, that may be overlooked uh, may look. Yet, as Joe was just saying, going elsewhere. Who knows? So I, I don't like yeah. this process at all. I, I, I'm very uncomfortable with it because we have two competent individuals that can do it from within. That's right. Just a question. Did they apply? I know I understand what you're saying, what both of you are saying. Are they interested? Resumes are um, confidential in this round, okay. so I can't comment. Okay. Okay. Well, obviously, obviously, the obviously the, the comments assume that they have applied, although we don't know that. I don't know that, so um, I, I have a sense of it, but I, I don't know it. But the assumption is that um, that they would are both interested. Um, if they're not, then you know it's a whole different ball game. This is all again. I, I certainly have a good idea of what's happening. Let me just say this: that they should not be overlooked. I, I agree with you, Joe. There's that duck again. 
I think there is one kind of comment I would add to this mix as well. And listening to what you've all been saying is very true, I think. And the senior center operation is certainly a major part. Uh, as someone who's somewhat new to the council, I don't know whether senior center is 80% of the job or 50% of the job or whatever. But as we look over the, the job description, and as we also look over the, the bylaws we have, which I would refer to as the job description for the our Council on Aging, and also look at the bylaws for the Friends, which is actually a real corporation with the real board of directors and offices and a purpose, and say, well, the Director of Elder Affairs has also to pay attention to those things as well, and also to the other items that are on the, the job description, which you can all look at. So to me, it's a pretty big job. It's a pretty comprehensive job and it takes a whole lot. And all of this is around the whole issue of how the whole department gets run and the senior center is certainly a major part of it. And I think it's good to just encourage the, uh, the town manager and the deputy town manager to be looking over the full nature of the job and say, how do they want to structure it? This is a, uh, one time to do that, to look at the senior center structuring, plus look at uh, the whole rest of the job as well. Any other comments? Okay, Dee, it's back to you. Thank you. So I appreciate the feedback. I have taken notes and I will take that forward uh, to the town manager. And anyone that would like to be consulted, please send me an email and I will reach out to you. And if Thank it pleases you. the chair, I'd like to go on to the next agenda item. Please do. So an update on the Senior Community Center construction. Unfortunately, I don't have much else to say um, other than what we had said last week. We are still waiting for um, one of the tenants to leave the site before we can start the site work. Um, one of you did reach uh, off, reached me offline to ask me why we can't start and work around that structure. And it's in such a position where um, the site work, it needs, to, it needs to be vacated and it needs to be torn down. So unfortunately, we are still waiting for the one person to vacate. Um, that being the bad news. The good news is that the builder has agreed to keep construction costs static. So as we are waiting, it's not costing us more money, which is huge. Um, because as you know, building construction fees uh, go up all the time. And in the COVID moratorium, um, you know, they could have the opportunity to charge us, you know, present day prices. They have locked in their prices. So that's a huge thing. So again, we're still just waiting for that final tenant to vacate. And once that happens and uh, we can break ground, which will be fantastic, we can start construction. Why, Deb, why is that person still there? Because there's a federal moratorium on evictions. So we may not oh. have to uh, this is uh, this is Joe again, uh, a good presentation, good review. Uh, on the new senior center and this individual that refuses uh, to vacate, uh, I believe he is renting that property and obviously he doesn't care about seniors in our town or about senior center at all. He only cares about one thing, which is, which is himself. I haven't said that. I know that there was a federal mandate against evicting people. Worst case scenario, um, how long will he be there? Do you have any idea at all? Because these mandates continue to go on and on and on. With no end in sight. And, and we should have started construction a long time ago. So what's the worst case scenario <clears throat> for this man who doesn't care about our senior center or our seniors at all? I wish I could tell you, I don't know when the federal moratorium will be lifted, nor do I know when the owner can come to some sort of an agreement with that person to vacate the property. So that's a question I unfortunately cannot answer. So next year, we could arguably be in the same position that we're in right now. That's right. Yeah. 
It's unbelievable. So have you have you guys considered adding any pressure to to them to make make it imperative that that this person um, is thought to look to leave, or is it a question of that person standing in the window and to Joe's point, just simply saying, "Ah, oh, I can stay here as long as I want," um, and stymie the whole. Um, of reconstruction of the senior center. This, there seems to be some leverage the town should be able to bring to at least force some sort of, we've got a standoff here, a Mexican standoff, and that seems to me that um, this, this town's got to have some leverage to be able to um, make this happen. Um, because to Joe's point, he's actually controlling the whole, uh, future of the senior center at this point not not it's not not right not in the town's interest not in the senior's interest no okay um do you have another item I do. Did, did someone have a final comment on that? I saw someone unmute. I have a question. It's Heather. Can you hear me? I can. Um, on the on the price hold, did that include materials only because materials have gone up significantly, prices of them, or was that only labor? I believe it was both, but I can confirm that. Okay. Because the price materials have, um, I know with what materials we order for our company, we have more than doubled and tripled on some materials during um, COVID. So that'd be important because it will affect the cost if it's only labor and not materials also. Oh. I will well, check into a, that. That's a real good point. Uh, as an engineer, frankly, I doubt that that, <clears throat> uh, that includes material uh, because it, the cost is going up right now, markedly. So I just don't see that happening for the material, maybe labor, but not the material. I know if I was a contractor, I wouldn't say, well, we're going to hold on, uh, on cost increases for labor and material, not knowing what the material costs would be in the future. So we will see on that. Okay. Thank you for your comments, Steve. You want to talk about the reopening of the senior center? Sure. So I have met with both the staff and um, the Board of Health. Uh, the board, the, I'm sorry, the health director, Brian, met with uh, the staff and myself to talk about some reopening plans for the senior center. So we have been brainstorming on um, different ways to make it a safe and also secure environment for seniors to return in small groups. So we've had some initial discussions on how the registration process would go, what kind of programs that we could safely offer, how people would enter the building, how they would exit the building, what some of the expectations would be while they're in the building, i.e. masks on at all time, six feet of social distancing, et cetera. So the staff has met, and one of the first things that we need to do is move all of the um, non-perishable items out of the senior center because it's taking up a majority of the large activity room. So we have engaged in conversations with two organizations that are interested. Uh, they are North Andover organizations in taking the food and distributing it for us so that we can get that out of there. Next plans are to do some painting, to jazz things up a little bit, do a comprehensive floor cleaning, as well as a COVID cleaning with the electrostatic guns and all of that. Um, immediately prior to the seniors returning. So we have been working behind the scenes to try to figure out what a reasonable date would be when you know many seniors will already have their second vaccine and work towards being able to protect both the seniors but also the staff. So that's been one of the things that we've been working hard on, on programming mm -hmm. as well as pre preparing the, the site for senior activity. I'll take any questions. 
Do you need uh, this is Joe number two? Um, does does do you need um, do you need volunteers? Is, is, would there be a general call to have um, folks like us or the friends or other folks interested to come down and and help the cleaning process or painting or whatever? Um, maybe add a lot more hands to the um, project. Thank you. That, that, that's so nice of you to offer, but we already have staff that are going to be taking care of those things. So um, while we appreciate the offer, um, we want to try to limit the amount of people that are in the center um, at any time so that we can, you know, control contact tracing and all of that. But we oh, have sure. staff who will be doing the painting. So thank you very much, though. Okay. Uh, I, I have a question. When do you think the board could meet in person at the center? Next month. Oh, that would be so good. <laughs> oh, that would be so good. Anyway, I'm sorry. Do you, do you have any idea? I do not, but that is something I can check in with uh, the health director. Okay. Yeah, it depends what the governor decides, too. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not sure a board of this size quite yet, but I will get I will get his professional opinion on that. Okay, appreciate it. I can't stand these small this things is, uh, here. This is Joe again. The uh, recommendation and guidelines for reopening uh, senior center, and I'm sure that we'll do a real good job on that. Uh, but the mandate may come from uh, from the governor. Uh, I know when I review that uh, the health report. Uh, things are looking pretty good right now, and that may not be in the too distant future. So that's a oh, good. I, a, a, a hoping... a discussion. Yeah, it's like the seventh inning stretch in a baseball game. You know, it, it's it's <laughs> almost over. It, yeah. yeah, and I'm not being facetious about that at all. Either. No, that's a great analogy, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> are there any other questions of D or comments anyone would like to make? If not, thank you, Dee, for coming and giving us those reports. Uh, they're helpful. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Mo moving on, the next last requested item on the agenda is Joe McCarthy, Chair of the Board of Health and also one of our members on the coronavirus and vaccine update. Joe, you're on. Yeah, as uh, stated the uh, last few months, there has been a, a continuation of improvements in the uh, COVID-19 statistics uh, with cases, hospitalizations, uh, deaths, and positive rates trending down. Trending down markedly, as a matter of fact. Uh, in Massachusetts, over 2 million vaccines have been given, and 4.1 million adults eventually will be eligible for vaccination. Uh, and in total, that is. Uh, children is a different story right now. We just don't have that timeline. Uh, uh, furthermore, in that many residents have caught the virus, and some of whom don't even know that they caught the virus, a uh, hurting probably will take effect in the spring, and, and, virus, and the virus will die out by, by the summer. If the statistics remain on track, they may not, but that's what it looks like at this particular time. Uh, and there are three approved vaccines, as most of us know, uh, the Pfizer and the Moderna. Those are two shots, and the Johnson & Johnson uh, is a one-shot vaccine. And maximum protection, by the way, is two weeks after you have received your final shot. Now, some highlights are not the end of the virus statistics. And this is from uh, yesterday's report. Uh, the total cases are not the end of uh, 2,552 active 48. Now that's down from 128 last month and 250 from the previous month. We covered an out of isolation for 2,417 and related deaths, uh, 87. Uh, the seven day is referred to as positivity rate in Massachusetts is down to, I think it's like 1.66 and it continues to markedly down which is a reason why the governor uh, is, is loosening, up on, loosening up on the regulations. Now, mass seniors in the vaccine, seniors in nursing homes and assisted living communities who have wanted to be vaccinated have been vaccinated. Since February the 1st, seniors over 75 have been eligible for vaccination. 
Since February the 18th, seniors over 65 have been eligible for vaccination. Good luck trying mm -hmm. to schedule an appointment, by the way. It's, it's a daunting undertaking. Um, and as I said, signing up for the vaccination on the mass.gov website is difficult for many seniors. And, and as stated last month, uh, the state and our town are now helping them sign up for state assistance, just dial 211. And for town assistance, a day unless it has changed, it's a 978-208-6070. Now, some of the medical uh, establishments, the big ones in Boston that I've gone to at one time or another, receive notification uh, from them uh, that vaccines are available, uh, as, well as, uh, as well as CVS and Main Street. But the supply is very limited, and good luck trying to make an appointment to be vaccinated. So as of this Thursday, the state's 400,000 K-12 teachers, school staff, and child care workers will be eligible for vaccination. And they will be competing for vaccine against seniors over 65 who have not been vaccinated. Want to make it a lot more difficult for many of us that are over 65 who have not been vaccinated. And furthermore, seniors 60 to 65 will not be eligible for vaccination until phase three, which will begin on April the 1st. So as such, a younger, say a younger healthy teacher will be vaccinated before a 64 year old senior who may have some physiological complications. This is wrong. Why is this happening? Why are the seniors being discriminated? Once again, in Massachusetts, it's very, very easy. The answer, the teachers have support of their unions. And seniors between 60 and 64 years old may not have any support at all. So we are being sacrificed for other people, some of whom are very young and very healthy. It just doesn't end for our seniors. Now, yesterday, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention relaxed safety guidelines for, full, for fully vaccinated people. Uh, and that's highlighted as follows. Uh, fully vaccinated people can visit indoors with unvaccinated people from another household without wearing masks or staying six feet apart, as long as everyone else in the household is at low risk from severe disease. Now, what does this mean? Let me give you an example. I like to visit my grandkids uh, and my daughter loves me to come over, but I know that she is concerned because she doesn't want me to get sick or die, nor does she want anyone in the family to be contaminated for me. She won't say that to me directly, but I know that that's where she's coming from. Now with these guidelines, our seniors can visit our kids and grandkids without wearing masks inside so that is that is huge also too if you want to get together with uh with mm -hmm. friends and relatives stay in your house for dinner and if they have all been vaccinated um uh, do it you don't have to wear a mask you don't have to be six feet apart so again the light is at the end of the tunnel and there are going to be more guidelines from from the federal government and from the state uh here's another one um uh, uh as as uh, recommended by the CDC yesterday. For fully vaccinated people, uh, you can skip the quarantine testing when you're exposed to someone else. Uh, if that person potentially shows, uh, shows no symptoms at all. So that is, that is huge. And that's gonna have, this is primarily for D, a major impact on our town. Because if, if, if one has been vaccinated, and has been near someone else who has not been vaccinated, but that person who has not been vaccinated is healthy. Eh, this shouldn't be a problem. Shouldn't be a problem at all. Now, the effects of the virus on seniors. This information is, is really catastrophic, and we won't have a, a good idea probably until like another year or so. But let me go over some of the effects on the virus on seniors. Uh, seniors have experienced disproportionately greater adverse effects from the virus, including more severe complications, higher mortality, fear of social isolation, disruption of daily routines, and access to care. Uh, and it's more difficult for many of us in adapting to technologies like telemedicines. And, um, and there's been exacerbation, exacerbation of mental health conditions, such as depression, 
substance abuse, family abuse, and suicide. Now, I mentioned seniors, but this goes to all society, and even the young kids are suffering, suffering daily because of this. So I hope to have them present more information on the virus and vaccines by the next Board of Health meeting, which will be at 7 p.m. on Thursday, March the 25th, and which should be live. That should be live, by the way, not virtual. I've stated all along to the director of the Department of Health that I want to be one of the first boards in our town to have live, not virtual broadcasts. Uh, and it can be watched, whether it's live or virtual, on Comcast 8 and Verizon Channel 26. Uh, so as just mentioned, hopefully our seniors uh, are, at our next uh, our next Council on Aging meeting, excuse me, will be in town hall. It, it may not be, but there are really four options that warrant further discussion and consideration, and not at this time, by the way, uh, for future Council on Aging meetings. Uh, should they remain virtual as is? Should they remain virtual showing faces on TV, which our virtual meetings do not? I believe that the, uh, the select board, yeah, you can see people's faces, I know that, at least you had in the past. Um, we go back to the old way, meet in the senior center, uh, and we can do that either offline as we have done in the past, or online, that is that can be televised or cannot be televised. Or we can change the meeting to be more consistent with other board meetings. Now, typically other board meetings are held at night on seven o'clock, not always. And there's five members of the board. I'm not saying that we sh our board should be cut, uh, but as people uh, retire, resign, uh, we can certainly get that number down. So we have a number of options available to us going forward in, uh, in, in our town meetings. Um, all town seniors, and this is the final point I want to make, all town seniors 65 or over who want to be vaccinated will be fully vaccinated within a month or two. So that gets to the discussion we had early on reopening our, our senior center. Uh, hurting could be here by the spring. Uh, reopening of the senior center could be here within months. We don't know. But I do know, because I have so much respect for people in our town government, and also members of our Council on Aging, that we will be ready for this opening. And personally, I just can't wait. And that is it. Any questions at all? Joe, this is Jen. Yes, Jen. Um, how many of those positive cases are from the college? In your numbers, uh, I don't have that. I tried to to get that information, additional information. From, I do know the numbers going down. Uh, right. I tried to get that information from uh, the director, <clears throat> Final Grass, uh, but but unfortunately he's on vacation right now. So I did speak speak with Steve Casey about it yesterday. But there's so much information that that, that uh, so many questions that I have that I just don't have good information, and and, and I'm not going to sidestep. I I just don't know. Other than that, the numbers gone down. And the other question I have is, uh, what are you doing for those um, in the town that have some kind of, um, they're nervous about getting the vaccine from what they've heard or read? Do you have any, like, education plan for those type of people? Especially well, there's, the seniors? Yeah, there, there are several things that, 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 that have been done. Uh, the governor, and this is only for people 75 years of age or older, says that, hey, those people that are reluctant to get back, vaccinated or confused or don't want to go alone, Whomever accompanies them, regardless of their age, can be vaccinated. And that's left, that has led to some difficult feelings. Uh, the governor hasn't lowered that from 75 to 65. Also, too, I know that our town has been in a position to help seniors and such. And I mean, maybe you want to comment further on that or you did. Thank you, Joe. Um, Yes, yeah, so we dedicated several employees to literally registering anyone that we had on our list, as well as anyone that calls in now. We still have staff that are assisting people to sign up because it is a very difficult process. 
We're also giving them other resources that they can call as well to help sign up. So, and then Jen, to answer your other question, last evening at the Board of Selectmen meeting, the town manager reported that there are four active cases attributed to Merrimack College. Okay, I know they test frequently. Thank you. Thank so, you. So once again, as I said, we're, you know, the, the, the school teachers, regardless of age and health, are eligible for vaccination tomorrow, and they'll be competing with seniors for vaccine. Right. Uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, if, if you're looking at mortality, the mortality is, is, uh, is, there are problems with seniors. The problems are not with these young school teachers, but they'll be, because they have their union, they will be protected. And seniors is every is everybody on our is everybody on our board vaccinated at this point? I'm vaccinated. I, uh, I have I both am. my Pfizer shots. Yes. I'm all right. I'm vaccinated twice. I'm vaccinated. I am two. Well, so then the, then the one. then the question. Okay. So then the question is from from each one of us: what what kind of difficulty um, did we encounter? To, to get the vaccine, and Joe, uh, you mentioned the two one one thing, and and weeks ago we tried that; and it was a total disaster. Um, but each one of us, as it turns out, either ended up getting um, a town call, or a call from a hospital, or got in some other way. And when my wife and I got it, we ended up in Lawrence, um, run by Lawrence General Hospital. It was absolutely amazing what a great job they did. But it was clear they could have handled a lot more people. Um, so apparently, you can only. I'm sorry. Go ahead. you have. This is. That I have to. I have to speak up to this. You can only handle the number of shots you have. It's what I do for. Right. You can may have room for more people. You may have room for more seats, but you can't administer vaccines that you don't have two doses of. True. That so I guess uh, I guess my question is: Is the town uh, is the town program tied into, say, the Lawrence General Hospital, or are we our own, you know, sort of vaccination hub, uh, or do do you do you have connections with, say, the General or the Bond or on or, or the Holy Family or? The, this is Joe again. Our, our, our town has received a very limited supply of vaccines. And uh, uh, town employees such as policemen and firemen and uh, and so forth uh, have been have been vaccinated uh, by our town nurse and her uh, assistants, uh, and we have enough remaining vaccines for the second shot. Uh, of course, as I said, the Johnson and Johnson is only one one shot. So mm -hmm. Pfizer and Moderna, and this in the vaccines that we've had, I believe have only been the Moderna. Uh, because you don't have to keep them at at uh, close to minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit, mm. uh, so you, can, you can put them in a you have a refrigerator. So the the, ta the the town has done really a stellar job, but very very frustrated because the vaccines aren't there. That it's not. Yeah. Now I know when I would because I'm considered to be a healthcare worker, even though uh, you know I make I have part time job helping elderly that are uh, deaf or blind. And I make minimum wage doing it, but I'm considered to be a healthcare worker. So I signed up uh, near the end of phase one, uh, and immediately I was able to get a vaccination slot within a couple of days at the at the Lawrence uh, at the at, at the Lawrence General Hospital. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. that has not happened for the vast majority of people who are always, who are going crazy. Yeah, so it's it's been a pop. Now the now the firemen yeah. throughout the state are looking at at, at helping. Uh, helping to vaccinate uh, teachers, uh, K-12, in the schools themselves. So that has some merit to it, but you know, they'll put them you know, further top of the class to be vaccinated uh, you know, at the expense of, of seniors, but it is what it is. We have to get the students back in the room and you have to, to do that, you have to vaccinate your teachers. You have to vaccinate the seniors first, otherwise they, many of them will die. I understand that, but they don't have the um, the students at this point. Uh, they've been out of and lost a year's worth of education. I support the seniors, and I believe me, I want the seniors vaccinated. The town has done an overwhelming job to contact all the seniors over 75. 
and make their appointments. The Board of Health, along with the Senior Center, along with other people, have been working really hard at it. And I think if we know that there is seniors out there that are struggling for appointments, our goal should be rather than saying that what we're doing wrong with the teachers, maybe helping the seniors that need the appointments. Well, we're not doing anything wrong with the teachers. It's just that I have a problem with them, them, them being uh, <laughs> uh, 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 able to get vaccinated before seniors. Uh, uh, but I can't blame them. If I was a teacher, I'd want to be vaccinated too. You know, and they, and, and they have the clout through the union to be vaccinated, you know, the, the, so they have the support. Seniors don't, a lot of them. Okay. Any other comments? Well, thank you, Will, thank you, Joe, and thank you for everyone else who's spoken up and added their thoughts. If there's nothing else, is there any other business to be brought up before this meeting? If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I, move. Joke, and I, I will make that motion, but, but first I want to say from all of us, uh, again, Irene, the best. Can I, can I make I, a comment? I finally think you can hear me. Can you hear yes, me, Irene? Irene? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Yes. You know, I, a long story short, uh, my computer crashed last week and they gave me a new one. And for some reason, I kept bouncing in and out. And my my computer was giving all that feedback. And I had I had my mute off and everything. So I jumped to the phone. I finally got the number and jumped to the phone. And I apologize. But I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for um, mm -hmm. the support that I have received from the board. And uh, there's so many members that have gone, that have left us, passed on, and... Um, I think Maria and Jack are probably the last two of the, the group that originally started when I was hired, you know, 19 years ago. So um, I really oh, okay. appreciate all the efforts. Yeah, yeah, well, you're hanging in there and you're making a difference and that's the most important thing. And I hope that, um, I know one of the things the town has really encouraged was to, to to be training those below us and we have done that very well at the senior center and just to put a plug in for two of my employees that you know have started from scratch and uh it's always succession planning that was always the plan and both of them have worked really hard and have started as receptionists so um, it does work in, in a lot of communities, but I also understand that there's a lot of new information out there and everybody, everybody is just, I, I just can't say enough about my staff. My staff is unbelievable and I am just so grateful for the time that I had in North Andover. And um, it's been a lot of ups and downs and um, I just appreciate everybody and thank you so, so very much. Hey, Irene, it's Joan Ahill. I didn't get a chance before to um, congratulate you. Um, it's been great working with you, and I know you're going to have a great um, a great retirement. And I will um, d double um, what you said about having a great staff. Um, you guys have done an amazing job for the town, and I think we all wish you Godspeed. Joe, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Anyone else? If not, are you, again, thank you, Irene, for all of those years that you've put in. And as you've heard, we all wish you well, health and happiness in, uh, in your retirement. And I, I appreciate that very much. <laughs> <laughs> are we ready to adjourn? I make a move. All right, Dave and Joe, motion and second to adjourn. Uh, all those in favor, I think we can just do a yay. 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 Anybody want to hang on? No? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll hang on. Uh, maybe, I don't know, just the board maybe to hang on, just us. All right. All right. 
is that Maria uh, asking yes. if the board would stay and the others may leave? Yes, if that's possible. <laughs> okay. If that's okay with everyone, then we'll declare the meeting adjourned.